What's going on everybody? Real Estate Randy here with another video for you today. Today's video is the five mistakes that first time home buyers should avoid. Okay, if that sounds good to you, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe because that's the only way I can tell if you love me or not. And I need to be loved. So please, click that button. If that sounds good to you, let's get into it. Number one, not budgeting for closing costs. There is more than just your down payment to pay. There are closing costs. And closing costs includes numerous things, such as loan origination fees, discount points, appraisal fees, title searches, title insurance, surveys, taxes, deed recordings, and credit report. So these are all fees that are going to have to be paid at closing. Now, if you're working with a good realtor, you can find ways to mitigate that cost during the negotiation process. Number two, not getting pre-approved before looking at a home. There has been many situations that I've ran into when I've worked with somebody when they looked at homes already and they found one that they love and they come to find out they can't afford that home. There is a problem right there because that's going to mess up the buying experience for you because you're going to compare every home you look at from then on out to that home that you could not afford. That's why you want to get that pre-approval first because one, it tells you what your purchasing power is. And then two, if you work with a really good lender, they can give you a breakdown of what your estimated monthly cost is. So that way you can figure out what exactly you want to pay a month as well. You might qualify for $500,000, but you don't want to spend more than $2,000 a month on your mortgage. Well, that's not a $500,000 home. So if you're working with your lender getting pre-approved, they can tell you exactly, well, if you want to be at $2,000, you can't spend more than $300,000. So get that pre-approval first. Number three, using all of your savings to pay for closing. Look, you don't want to use all your savings, especially if you're working with a resale home. Here's the thing. These homes, they're older, and you never know what's going to happen. Okay, now if you got a new build home and it's a new construction home, you do have typically a, a year door-to-door uh, -door warranty, so everything's going to be covered, but you still want to have something of a nest egg left in your savings account for the what ifs. Now, I know we don't want to think negatively, but we also have to be rational. So just make sure when it comes to getting a home, do not spend all your savings. And that goes back to working with a good realtor to negotiate to make sure the least amount of money comes out of your pocket and working with a good lender to find all the programs that can help you as far as assisting you with your down payment as well. Number four, making big changes. This one I cannot stress enough, okay? The thing I love to tell my clients when we're under contract, from the day we get under contract to the day we close, you need to be the most boring person in the whole entire world. I am talking about, I don't even want you to go out to eat, don't go buy no video games, don't go out to play pool, nothing. Stay home, eat ramen, peanut butter, jelly sandwiches, be boring. You don't want to add no more debt. You don't want to spend any money that the lender has told you you need to have in your account at closing. And you just don't want to put yourself in a situation where we don't qualify for the home anymore because of some small mistake of forgetting to not use your credit card. Okay, and another thing, you don't want to switch jobs. Do not switch jobs jobs. I don't care if you hate the job. You stay at that job and you show up with a smile on your face until after you close and then you can switch jobs. I'm not saying to do that for all my lender friends. I would never tell you to quit your job after you sign for a home and they counted your income. I would never ever suggest you do that. I'm saying like if you had another job ready to go, like do that. I'm not saying just quit. Don't, don't do that. Uh, yeah, just, just be boring. And number five, assuming you don't even qualify for a home loan. I have ran into so many lifelong renters who never purchased a home simply because they had a belief that they would not qualify. And I'd ask them, well, why, what would make you think that? And they'd be like, look, I just, I just know that I don't qualify. Have you spoken to a lender? Well, no, I just, I just, I don't want to waste nobody's time. Do not do this, okay? Find out. Here's the deal. Even if you don't qualify right then and there, if you're working with a good team, your lender and your realtor, they're going to set forth for you a plan to get you in a home quicker than it would if you were doing it by yourself. 
You have never bought a home before. You're a first time home buyer. So how do you know what steps to take to get you in a home quicker? Who would know better than anyone else? Realtors and lenders. So don't just assume, reach out to a realtor. Me. No other realtors, reach out to me. Just go, forget, forget what I just said. Don't reach out to a realtor. Reach out to real estate Randy and then I'll get you in contact with great lenders and then we can figure out where we need to go from there, come with a great game plan to get you in a home sooner rather than later. Well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Please leave some comments. Tell me you love me. Tell me you want to hear about my dog. I don't care. Just leave a comment, you know, just so I can feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. Please. This has turned into a very begging video, hasn't it? I don't know. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyways, I hope you have a great day and always remember to stay.